Montana has a big height advantage all the way around in this game, particularly in the backcourt. Those two players you mentioned for Illinois, Makaira Cook and Genesis Bryan, are both 5'6". McKenzie is 5'10", and 5'10 is the height of Indiana's smallest starter, Grace Berger. So you're going to at least have a four-inch difference in the backcourt, something that should heavily favor the Hoosiers' way. How do you respond to that if you're Illinois? Do you throw out a bigger lineup? You have to have depth like Giovanna Lopez coming off the bench and providing that spark like she did against Minnesota in the last game. So Quickly we'll have to pay real attention to the, the front court taken. battle today. Now over to Makaira Cook at the top of the key. Bostic playing out at the three-point line. Very interesting to see indeed. Shu Pill trying to get involved inside. Now back to Makaira Cook. Cook looking to drive inside on two Hoosier players, and she gets it through. Makaira Cook, beautiful drive there. George, she had 33 points in the first matchup, but she can't be the only aligner to score double figures today. But an incredible move there by Makaira Cook. Great way to get it started in a packed State Farm Center here on this Wednesday night Big Ten matchup. Yeah, she carried them indeed in the last game. The aforementioned Grace Berger with a nice pivot and inside for the two. Grace Berger just gets it done in the small ways. I mean, she's such a dangerous player overall. Like we said, Terry Moran called her arguably the best player she's ever coached, so shows her off her skills right there and ties it up quickly. Parrish trying to stop the handoff from McKenzie, but a nice physical play inside. That's a hallmark of her game. Oh, yeah. Adelia McKenzie loves to drive to the hole. She can get open really easily so quick. So shifty, and she really proved that there on that nice drive. Wide inside to Moore McNeil off the miscommunication from Illinois. This is a slugfest to start out, but if Iowa falls and Illinois wins, they jump into second in the Big Ten standings. Cook off the screen from Bostic, doubled nonetheless. Out to McKenzie, has to get it from the shot clock, and she hits. Yeah, they're going to need her to be really active tonight, and she already has four quick points, so it's a great sign for Shonda Green's squad. Adalia McKenzie's got to be a double figure tonight. They want success. Share the load, spread it out, without a doubt, is a nice spin move for McKenzie Holmes. And uh, she's off to a really good start so far tonight. Holmes is going to be a very big difference maker in the hype battle tonight, so we're going to have to keep a real good eye on that Bostic-Holmes matchup. McKenzie, heat check. She hits six points out of eight already for Illinois. Oh, that's a great sign, like we were just talking about for Shauna Green squad. McKenzie hot early. Spearheading the effort on the physicality for Illinois. The points as well for Adalia McKenzie. Catch and shoot from Sydney Parrish. That's her spot. She can't hit, however. And the quick rebound for Genesis Bryant. what would be incredible ranked win coming back now Bryant back over to Boston miscommunication gives Makaira Cook the bucket beautiful take there by Makaira Cook just absolutely getting through the Hoosiers defense there finding the right lane to go down and delivering the two Side to Holmes. They love that one-on-one -on, -one on Bostic. Really kind of destroyed you down low. 29 points in that matchup on December 4th at Bloomington. Team's leading scorer, averaging 21 a game, coming off of uh, 29 points in the Sunday route of Wisconsin. Illinois still holding on to a narrow lead. Brings shoot Bill harassed on the outside. Seven on the shot clock. Quick turnaround jumper from Bostic is good. Yeah, they're going to need really nice interior play from Bostic. The turnaround jumper over over Holmes. Super good sign for the Illini. Didn't get Bostic working. As now Chloe Moore McNeil driving inside. McKenzie bodies up on her. Catch and shoot from Garzon. And the rebound pulled out. Nice defense there. And a catch and shoot is good from Genesis Bryant. There's that Illinois transition play that Shauna Green has really emphasized in her small tenure here so far and what's been a great season. 
Berger and Mahomes play two man ba- check that Holmes playing two man basketball. Back the other way now for Cook. Unable to get the roll. Bostic tried again. Still trying to hold on to it. Nice play inside from Bryn Shupil. The Illini are fired up. The only three so far for either team coming just now from Genesis Bryant for Illinois. There's a little 7 nothing run here has vaulted them up by nine. Grace Berger trying to provide a quick answer to that, and she does. Very pure. Illinois trying to answer. Bostic with a quick turnaround. Not enough juice. Moving quickly now, the Minnesota transfer, Sarah Scalia. Goes on, back to Moore McNeil. Moore McNeil driving inside. She's undersized. She'll kick it out. Garzon a three. That's good. And the first for the Hoosiers today. Garzon delivers a big one for the Hoosiers. So now a minute and a half left, and this slugfest continues. Ten on the shot clock now. Illinois forced to play a bit slower as Makaira Cook drives inside and gets the foul call. The last thing they want is for Kendall Bostic to get into foul trouble, as she did in the previous game. Now in what has been a seven-man rotation for Illinois over the last few games, Jada Peebles and Jayla Odin are in the game for Illinois. With Makaira Cook and Adalia McKenzie getting some rest. Scalia the other way. Illinois doing a great job with the perimeter defense now. Now it's a one-on-one. Kick back out. Deep three from Parrish, and she hits. Jayla Odin will hold. About a six-second difference between the game and shot clock. Now Genesis Bryant with it. Trying to go inside. Double teamed. Circus shot does not go. Four seconds left. Back now comes Sydney Parrish. She tries to put one up. Odd angle, still got it close, but doesn't get it to fall, and Illinois leads by three after one. This has been a slugfest. Three minutes left in the third quarter in East Lansing. The Hawkeyes up by one as Garzon takes advantage of McKenzie's over-pursuit. Can't get it to fall, however, and now Genesis Bryant back the other way. It's a tough miss for the Hoosiers. they got to see that one fall. Bryant around a screen and a nice find inside to Adalia McKenzie. Oh, we were talking about the Illini are playing really well down low so far. Obviously, Shauna Green had a very different approach to this game, and it's shown so far. The Illini are very active on both sides of the ball, and it's impressive. Grace Berger trying to post up. Now inside Garzon. Nice move. Navigation of the ball through traffic, and she gets the points. They're certainly equaling the pressure Illinois has applied. Kyra Cook dribbling inside traffic. Now back to Bryant. Ten on the shot clock as Bryant tries to do the same. They're trying to get it inside to the big. That's Bostic, but Grace Berger takes it away. Yeah, you're not going to get that one past McKenzie Holmes down there. She was right there, got the tip pass, and was able to get the steal. Holmes going after Bostic on a one-on-one. That's exactly what the game plan was coming in, too. Got to make sure to double team Holmes based off her performance in the game we've talked about so much already. Well, on the offensive side, too, they get the guards down low. It's not just big against big as a three does not go there. And a rebound now from Jada Peoples. Rick right. thought about a second chance. Now Bryant will apply that second chance and hits. She can hit. Great teams able to win in multiple ways. Has a nice drive there from Moore McNeil. She'll get to the stripe. That is just, that just shows how good of a basketball team Terry Morin has. And it's been a very impressive season for the number six squad in the country. And on that point about, but they have a lot of players, Moore McNeil who's at the line and Berger in particular, who were just Pac-Man players. They're just running all over the court and causing chaos on the defensive side. Bryant. Back at the wing. Fight for the rebound. Pulled out to Sydney Parrish. Quick pass inside to Moore McNeil. A good body up there from Lopez. And free throws the rest of the way that might end up making the difference in this half at the very least for Indiana. Shoots over 75% from the free throw line on the season, but big one here. And that can hurt them late in games. Now Makaira Cook on the near side. Cook driving inside, now back out to Peebles. 
Peebles trying to do the same. Great defense here in the paint by Indiana. They're forcing Illinois back out as the three does not go, and that will be a shot clock violation. Great defense by the Hoosiers, and I'm sure we'll see more of that tonight. In the first quarter for Illinois, as a one-on-one, -on -one, Mackenzie Holmes wins the day. And now Indiana's doing the same thing on defense, and it seems to be denying Illinois. They're kept to the outside now. Right on cue, Genesis Bryant has to back up. Now she has it again. Trying to go inside, loses control of it. And a jump ball called that will go the Hoosiers' way. A lot of quick outlet passes to Chloe Moore McNeil after rebounds for Indiana. But she's calling for it now. It's out to Scalia, now on the near side. Sarah Scalia, the Minnesota transfer, has it stripped. And back the other way comes Adalia McKenzie for a two-on-one. McKenzie with a sweet move. Still trying for it, and she'll get to the line as a reward. Get an opportunity to put up two free throws. Again, only one Big Ten win for Illinois last year. Speaks to how quick this turnaround has been. McKenzie has eight alongside Genesis Bryant. It's a big point there, at least to get something back in the net for the Illini. So hopefully, hopefully for them, they'll be able to feed off that. Nice move inside by Grace Berger. Delivering another big bucket to give the Hoosiers their first lead of the night. And again, to the point that Alec made, their experience, they've been here before. They know how to keep calm and composed as a sweet swat there for McKenzie Holmes. Back the other way now. They've been here before, and their poise shows it. It open, but back inside. And looks like in her first minutes, both of these teams don't take a lot of threes. Smart with the ball. They both are very shot efficient teams. Four turnovers for either squad as we're nearly towards halftime now. Makaira Cook. Now inside to McKenzie. Great hesitation. Count it and one. That's a big bucket. And averages 6.6 .6 rebounds per game. She has such great control inside of her body, such great discipline, doesn't let her momentum get the best of her. And it's paid off on actually her last couple of possessions where she's had it inside. Grace Berger very active inside as well, but a block from behind. Bostic has not been in since that second foul call. Struggling from the free throw line. They're now up by two with two and a half left in the first half. McKenzie physical moving inside and again she will get to the line. Tie it back up. And indeed she does. We're back to even terms now with two minutes left in the first half. The defense has picked up here in the second quarter. It started as a slugfest in the first. And now both teams feeling each other out. Now they have a handle on the other. Makaira Cook on Grace Berger. Great body control there from Berger, and she delivers. Yeah, Berger now with nine points. She's kind of leading the way for the Hoosiers, tied with Mackenzie Holmes. Two Hoosiers almost in double figures, and it just shows how much the Hoosiers miss Berger in that December 4th matchup like we talked about in the open. Nice move there from McKenzie. However, unable to get the bucket. And Berger falling down trying to grab that one. It does go the Hoosiers' way. Moving quickly now. Unable to handle that one, however, Garzon. Aldalia McKenzie trying to make her pay for it. Too many bodies in the way. Now to Nador at the free throw line. She can't hit it either. That is just a backbreaker. The fact they're only down two right now with and Shauna Green livid both at McKenzie and at this Jeff Cross led refereeing corner. Is Makaira Cook now? Can she carry the load for Illinois offensively? In and out on the three. Shoe Pill trying to keep it alive, but it goes to Grace Berger. Now a five on three here for Indiana. They look to push it. They do inside to Holmes, and she converts. Five on the shot clock. Makaira Cook needs some help. Two left on it. She's got to take a shot. Short. And now Grace Berger will settle for the final one. The Illini are just not using the, these possessions well right now. They got to get something working down low. They got to get the door open. They have to get their cuts going. They're just standing around the perimeter hoping for something to happen. Two seconds left. Trying to go inside to Holmes. And a miscommunication between those two. 
And that will do it. Indiana outscoring Illinois 19 to 10 here in this second quarter, including a 14 to five run that sees them up six. Stakes in this game for Illinois too. If Michigan State ends up beating Iowa and Illinois wins this one, they jump into second above these Hoosiers. Michigan State and Iowa are going into overtime as we speak, tied at 70. Illinois has their own game to worry about, as do we. Genesis Bryant going inside, turn around, and a nice move there. The transfer from NC State having herself a nice game, but she's got to stay in. Like we are talking about, stay clean, avoid fouls. Parrish now trying to get in close. Curls around to the layup. Bostic in the way, and her height makes the difference. Very good interior defense there for the Illini. Shauna Green must have got on her team for their defense at halftime. Trying to get inside there was Bryant. Lays it in softly, and just like that, it's only a two-point game, George. Yeah, and a great start so far for Illinois. Going back to what worked for them in the first quarter, getting the guards involved offensively down low. Mackenzie Holmes trying to get in on Bostic, and she does. No surprise to see Bostic back off just a little bit there with two fouls. He stole the words right out of my mouth. Mackenzie driving inside. And Kendall Bostic beside herself there. Shauna Green sharing some words with Maggie Tiemann earlier as well, trying to talk things over, understand some calls as Grace Berger turns around and hits the jet. Able to make a beautiful move, turn around and hit the quick jumper. Reminds me a bit of a former player who's now on their coaching staff, Allie Patberg, as Berger steals that one now. Wide open to Moore McNeil. And Indiana's now up by eight. Timeout, Illinois. Sydney Parrish now with two fouls of her own, so that's something to watch out for on the Hoosier side of things. She and Yarden Garzon both have two for IU as Adalia McKenzie curls to the bucket. Aim is off, and back comes Chloe Moore McNeil. Quickly inside to Grace Berger. She got past everyone. Count it and one on Bryn Shoup Hill. And now for Illinois, you're starting to recognize the game's a little bit out of hand. You just brought Genesis Bryant back in with those three fouls. She was a great spot for Illinois from three in the first half. That's a great rebound there from Aichin Adour. She'll look to take another one here, and she hits. Shauna Green looking for a spark plug, and she found one. Meanwhile, on the other side, Mackenzie Holmes gets past everybody. Now Makaira Cook with it. Back to Bryant. She's going inside. And looks like Illinois starting to find an answer. Bryant up to 17, leading the way. Genesis Bryant's hot. Got to feed the hot hand. Give her the ball. Give her the ball, Lina. She's feeling it right now. Targeting Holmes, a one-on-one -on, -one on Giovanna Lopez. Holmes going inside. Spin move around. What a nice move. That's been her signature in this game and as of late. Mackenzie Holmes just once again dominating the Illini down low. Already up to 17 points now. She's going to want to keep it up. Bryant with the circus shot. Tried for that one. Couldn't get it to go. To carry a bit more of the workload now with Kendall Bostic out. She'll try to do that now. And now she'll set a screen. Sydney Parrish with it. A mismatch on Lopez. Reverse layup is good and a crafty one there from the Oregon transfer. Beautiful move by Sydney Parrish. Got down low. Meanwhile for Illinois, it's mostly been Genesis Bryant as Jada Peebles can't hit. Now Scalia with it as we're inside of four minutes left in the third. The Illini need to go back to what was working before. And a sweet spin there from Mackenzie Holmes. At what there. point do you stick Kendall Bostick back in? Well, she's coming back in right now. She's on the she's on the sideline waiting for the next dead ball. Indeed, set to check back in as Makaira Cook stopping and starting. Important free throws. Is Makaira Cook, one of the many players and assistant coaches Shauna Green brought over from Dayton. It's that. She now has eight. Again, she carried them offensively in the first matchup between these two teams with 33. It's been Genesis Bryant, and it's been Adalia McKenzie thus far for Illinois in that regard. McKenzie Holmes, it has been for Indiana, and she gets two more. Bryant's done well with the three. Do they go to her, or do they go to Bostic inside with McKenzie Holmes out? They're going aggressively towards Bostic. She's posting up, and the hook shot is good. That's exactly what I said they needed to do. Bostic with a quick two. Meister answers on the other end. Point for point here. 
That was good defense down low by Bostic. Hand straight up against Moore McNeil. Just couldn't get the rebound. Bostic again, and she hits. That's only points three and four for her. Like I said, they got to get her working now that Meister's in. Get her going while Holmes is out. Indiana trying to answer quickly. They're pushing the pace, and a nice three there from Yarden Garzon. Shooting it so well. 57% from the field at this point right now, George. Every time Illinois has a great pickpocket there. But Makaira Cook still able to make something happen with it. Every time Illinois puts up a run, they respond. It's just small little runs by the Hoosiers that have given them this 12-point lead. There's been back-to-back -back buckets for a while now. Make it 15. Garzon starting to get hot from beyond the arc. It's going to start with a big offensive position here. they got to get a bucket here. Bostic playing towards the outside. Makaira Cook going quick in and out there. Sidney Parrish with the board. And so Illinois again getting some good looks. That's been the theme of the night for Makaira Cook. Good looks but unable to convert. Now back to the other side. We're inside of a minute here. A one-on-two on McKenzie on Holmes. Bucket after bucket after free throw attempt. The Hoosiers are just getting it done down low. That may not affect the game as much as it would if it were close. Only 75% on the season as Holmes hits the second. Now 27 to 17 in the third. Ever since Illinois was up 19 to 10, they've had a stranglehold on this game. Grinshew Pill trying to get Illinois back in it. Okay, there's the basket he needed. Now Illinois needs to stop here really badly to close out the quarter. Give them a little bit of momentum heading into the final stanza of this one. Stop here is mandatory for the Salina team. Grace Berger with a nice turnaround inside to Holmes. And the foul. And again. Just finds a way to get the ball to Holmes, and you know she'll put the two in easily. Shauna Green talked about how Holmes will get hers, but we have to limit the other players around her, make her feel like she's doing it herself, as happened in the Michigan State game, as Makaira Cook's shot will be waved off, and that'll end it. And Terry Morin again is 10 minutes away from becoming the winningest coach in program history. Illinois trying to deny her that ability, make her wait at least one more game. They go right inside to the bigs. As Alec talked about, Kendall Bostic with a circus shot, and she'll at the very least get to the line. Grace Berger now with, check that, McKenzie Holmes now with three fouls. Berger has one. Everyone else in the game right now for the Hoosiers with two. Something to watch, especially with Holmes. McKenzie Holmes sees a lane, creates one, that is. And she's now up to 27. The Alliance just cannot get a stop. Hoosiers now up to 60% from the field. Kendall Bostic on the other side with the hook shot, and that's good. They got to get her working more if they want a chance to try and come back into this lead a little bit more in the fourth quarter here. Grace Berger tried to move around the screen from Holmes, has two on either side, and she still hits. She's been around the block. I mean, we've said it a few times, and she's just proving her might against this Illini squad tonight. The first quarter was her and Holmes playing some two-man ball in the third. They took over at different times as Boston continually getting harassed inside. She has to. I mean, Shauna Green has no other choice but to keep Boston right. in. So now if you're Illinois, you're at the very least keeping pace. Moore McNeil too strong. Good body up there by Shoup Hill. Now Illinois starting to get some chances. Can they convert? Genesis Bryant too far off. Bostic in the right place at the right time. Sarah Scalia with it now, trying to drive in on Bryant. Back to Berger. And she will do the same. Shot clock down to single digits at six. And an offensive foul. Right call by the officials there. So and now Indiana's Illinois. gone cold a bit as of late, and can Illinois cash in on that? That's the million-dollar question. Makaira Cook calling off the screen from Bostic. She's trying to find Genesis Bryant. She does. Bryant's crowded inside the lane, but that leaves the player wide open, and it's Bostic. Another stop here is vital for the Illini. they got to get the ball back. They said they got it. And they're getting Bostic involved in other ways, getting the bigs involved. And Illinois... One bucket away from getting this back into single digits. Halfway down here in the fourth. Looking for an answer. Bryant with it now. Shoe pill. That's been her spot as of late. And she hits. Whoa. And now if you're Indiana, they've put up 
the best run of the game. Now how do you respond? You do it with Mackenzie Holmes, but she can't hit. And now back the other way. Bryant. Bostic going inside. Bryant take it herself. But a foul called on Mackenzie Holmes. That's her fourth. Hawkeyes have held on, and that means if Illinois can pull it out, they'll instead move to third in the standings rather than second. Genesis Bryan unable to convert there. Five fouls now in this quarter for the Hoosiers, so that means the rest of the way it will be free throws for Illinois. Four minutes, 20 seconds left. It's a seven-point game and a 9 nothing run for Illinois. Who do you target now if you're Indiana? Who do you try and get involved? Get it back to 34. Illinois crowding them when they try and go on the drive. Inside now to Holmes. She gets it. A much needed response and the foul. Called it. Go to what has worked for them the entire game. Your best player in Mackenzie Holmes. She's now two points away from her career record of 32. She sure is. She's been the workhorse tonight. So now Illinois needs a response. Back up to 10. Genesis Bryant trying to go inside. Unable to hit it. Shoe pill in the right place at the right time. Bryant also a good job on the rebound. Makaira Cook back the other way. The Illini needed that one, so we'll see if they can get a stop here again. It's crucial. Can't let Indiana score here. Stops have been what's guiding them through this whole quarter so far. Owen oh, Moore McNeil trying to post up on Bryant. What a play there. Bryant's out of the game. And ones for Indiana. And Genesis Bryant exits the game. Last season in West Lafayette, where Indiana was able to pull away. She's been the sort of unofficial sixth man for this team, particularly during Grace Berger's absence earlier this season, and now she's coming up in the clutch. She played pretty well in that December 4th matchup, too. Illinois looking for an answer. They get one with Adalia McKenzie. On Makaira Cook, does not go. Fight for it, pulled away by Mackenzie Holmes. Saving a possession and killing at least 20 more seconds. Wow. I mean, that's just Indiana's size coming into play there. McKenzie had it, but then the other McKenzie pulls it away, and Holmes gets a huge rebound for the Hoosiers. Those are the plays that save games when you think about it. Indiana, again, had a stranglehold on this game up till about midway through the third quarter. Illinois goes on a bigger run. They respond with more authority. That cycle repeats itself. It's back up to 10 with two minutes, 10 seconds left as Adalia McKenzie can't hit. It's just too little too late for the Illini now, it looks like at this point. And ever since the Hoosier response, Illinois has been able to keep pace with them, but again, you can't really do that with a minute 45 left. They will get the ball here. Look for them to target Bryn Shue Pill here. She's been their second best as the pass too hot to handle there. McKenzie Holmes, Grace Berger, who else with it to try and ice it. Inside to Holmes, turnaround jumper, blocked by Shu Pill, back to Makaira Cook. Cook moving quickly, a one on three. She'll try and navigate it through traffic, and she will. You're running out of time if you're Illinois. You gotta foul, you gotta force something here. Makaira Cook tried to. Because Shauna Green was visibly upset that Illinois did not press. Foul check now to Shu Pill, that's her fourth. Tough three game schedule against these ranked opponents really does something to you as a team. But the more you do, the more out of reach it seems, the more the opponent does. And that is indeed the difference in this game. As Indiana will kill some more time here, up 10. Cook just tried to force that one to get a quick two. It just, you can't really score that over Mackenzie Holmes down low like that. It's just not gonna work. And it looks like that will do it. They will run out the clock here for two more possessions now. So Illinois will drop to five and three in Big Ten play. Drop to 15 and four on the season. And Indiana will continue their winning ways as Sidney Parrish finally gets one to fall. You can't discredit how impressive the Illini have been this season so far. Sure, you lost to a top, to a top six team, number six in the country by 13 points, but unless they score here. But and it's just been such an impressive season for the Illini, nonetheless. And it, well, another one of those losses was to Ohio State. And that will do it. Terry Morin congratulated on the Indiana sideline as she takes over the mantle, the winningest coach in program history.